by the end of this module the student shall understand the concept of social action come to know about the goals of social action come to know about the principle of social action get acquainted with the process of social action program development as in social action process the success of any community or area development program depend in large part on how effectively the program mobilizes human and non human resources in the action phases mobilizing the resources of a community or area to achieve the objectives of the development is a process of social action whether the project is an area vocational training school a labor survey a nursing home or a community education program the process of attaining the objective is social since it depends on motivating key people and organizations to participate actively in the action necessary to accomplish the development objectives this module discuss the process of social action and suggests how this processes may be used most effectively by individuals and groups who choose to work toward bringing about certain changes in their community or area concept of social action mary richmond have was the first to use the word social action in 1922 he has defined social action as mass betterment through propaganda and social legislation this definition stresses on improving the condition of huge section of population as an aim of social action with propaganda and social legislations as their main strategies social action may be considered as a method used for mobilizing masses in order to bring about structural changes in the social system or to prevent adverse changes in the indian context social action is taken as a transformational practice to meet the objective of promoting well-being by bringing change in the arrangement in social system that lead to inequality and injustice preventing people from realizing their full potential as self determining agents purposive social action of the kind being stressed in this module will be referred to as instigate change in that it is purposely planned and executed those persons or group who instigate the change will be referred to as change agents the emphasis of this module will be on the process involved in any social action project and will not focus on any particular type of change social action projects may be instigated by a particular group or organization or may be undertaken on a community or area wide basis groups organizations communities and in some cases areas have in common the fact that they are social systems as used in this discussion a social system is very general term and can mean any group of people who share some common interest and integrate together over time it may include country area and even state or national groups or organizations the important features that the members of the system know about each other and take each other into account in their actions plan purposeful social action attempt to bring about social change which it assumed maximizes satisfaction for a particular social system or systems if decisions are made and actions carried out regarding a community center a hospital united fund drive school recognition government reorganization or area development at least the majority of the community or leaders must coordinate their decision and action in order to attain the plan objectives social action thus may be analyzed in term of the flow or stages of social action over a period of time and the persons and social systems involved goals of social action mishra 1922 has identified following goals of social action 
Number one, recognition of needs, solution of mass problems, improvement in mass conditions, influencing institutions, policies and practices, introduction of new mechanism or programs, redistribution of power and resources, decision making, effect on thought and action structure, improvement in health, education and welfare. Principles of social action. Considering Gandhian principle of mobilization as a typical example of the direct mobilization, module of social action Brito 1984 brings out the following principles of social action. Number 1, principle of credibility building. It is the task of creating public image of leadership, the organization and the participants of the movement as champions of justice, recticulate and truth. It helps in securing due recognition from the opponent, the reference public and the peripheral participants of the movement. Credibility can be built through one or many of the following ways. For example, gesture of goodwill toward the opponent, example setting, selection of typical urgently felt problems or struggles success. Principle of legitimation. Legitimation is the process of convincing the target group and the general public that the movement objectives are morally right. Leaders of the movement might use theological, philosophical, legal technical, public opinions path to establish the tenability of the movement's objectives. Principle of dramatization. Dramatization is the principle of mass mobilization by which the leaders of a movement galvanize the population into action by emotional appeal, heroism, sensational news, management, novel, procedures, pungent slogans and such other techniques. Almost every leader mobilizing the masses uses this principle of dramatization principle of multiple strategies. There are two basic approaches of development that is conflictual and non-conflictual. Taking the main thrust of a program, one can classify it as political, economical or social. Zentel and Duncan have identified four development strategies from the experience of community development. These have been framed for use in social action. They are educational strategy, persuasive strategy, facilitative strategy and power strategy. The basket principle indicate the adoption of a multiple strategy using combined approaches and also a combination of different type of programs. Principle of dual approach. Any activist has to build counter systems or revive some unused system which is thought to be beneficial to the mobilized public on a self-help basis without involving the opponent. This is a natural requirement consequent upon the attempt to destroy the system establishment maintained by the opponents. This cooperative effort indicates that Gandhian adopted or attempted to a dual approach in their mobilization principle of manifold programs. This principle means developing a variety of programs with the ultimate objective of mass mobilization. They may be economic programs, social programs and political programs. Process of social action. It has been found that successful and efficient social action projects usually do not just happen. They are carefully convinced and plant. It has also been found by research and observation that successful social action projects tends to follow a certain identifiable consequence of steps. Certainly not all social projects follow the same procedure from start to finish, but sufficient similarities have been noticed to justify the decision of social action in terms of a sequence of steps. Depending on the magnitude of the project, 
these steps may be highly formalized and easily identified or may blend into one another so that there is almost a continuous flow of action. The step may not occur in the exact sequence stated, but sometimes during the program all the functions explicit in the steps seem to get performed. The following steps forms part of social action, they are analysis of the existence social system. All social system take place within the existing social system. The social systems comprising a community or the arena of social action are resources available to aid community action. In addition to knowing what group or organizations exist within a community or area, it is also important to understand something about the interrelationship between the system or to understand something about the goals and objectives and the purposes of each of these organizations along with the relative position of leadership influence in the total community or area. To know something about the group and the organization to which a key leader in the community or area belong. Convergence of interest. Social action begin when a problem is recognized as defined as a need by two or more people and a decision is made to act. Usually the original convergence of interest on a problem involves only a few people. The idea for a project may come about as a result of an informal discussion among a few community leaders or maybe an odd growth of a meeting for a particular group or organization. In any event at this step few people are involved and only highly tentative plans are made for the continuance or completion of the project. Step 3 analysis of the prior social situation. At this stage the change agents need to ask and seek the answers to several questions. These are has there been any experience in the community or area with the kind of project being proposed? Was it successful? If so, is it possible to determine what factors contribute to the success? If it was not successful, why not? The intent of this question is to capitalize on a past experiences in the community or area to provide insight concerning where emphasis may be required to improve the chances of success in the anticipated social action projects. What methods have been traditional in the community or area? Have almost action projects succeeded in the past because of the efforts of a new individuals or organizations or have they involved a majority of the people in the community or area? What is the general attitude in the community concerning progress? Or are people looking for ways to improve the community? What group or organizations seem to work together best? Is there ill feeling between the same organization which may prevent them from working together in a community wide project? By answering the above questions, the change agents can gain a better understanding of the prior social situation in the community and use this information in developing plans for proceeding with the proposed project. Step 4 Delineation of relevant social systems. There are several criteria which may be used to decide which systems are relevant to the proposed action program. First, we might ask which group in the community are or have in their membership the people to be reached with the program that is the target system. If the proposed project is a community youth center then at a minimum all youth organizations in the community become relevant to this particular project. Second, to what degree do the various groups or social systems in the community present the needs and interests of the people of the community or a particular organization 
that is the target system. The third important criteria relates to the legitimation process. Organizations or individuals having legitimation power should be considered as relevant to the project regardless of whether or not they actively participate in other stages of the process. The fourth criteria of relevancy is related to the extent to which a group might possibly be actively involved in planning, sponsoring or in other ways participating in the proposed project or program. It is important to identify as relevant not only those groups or organizations which express active interest, but also those who have the potential for involvement and which may oppose plan. Taking potential opposition into account from very start of the program will enable plans and strategies to be developed to counter the opposition when it arises. The tentative delineation of relevant groups allow the planners to use limited resources of time and personnel more effectively. As social action progresses from one step to another, certain systems may drop out of the relevant classification, others may have been added. Step 5 Initiating Sex The initiating set is a group of person probably including the change agents previously involved who are certainly interested in consulting with the key leaders of the relevant social system. In this sense, the initiating set is organized to perform the sound beard consulting and legitimating functions. At this step, it is essential that accurate and complete communication take place within the individuals who became the part of the initiator set. Legitimation Legitimation is used here mainly in the sense of giving sanction, authority, justification or license to act for action. It is recognized that final legitimation for any action program rest with the majority of the people in the relevant social system. In most social systems, there are certain key people who have the power of legitimation for act most action programs affecting their particular organization or following or in many cases in action programs involving the whole community or area. They are usually a formal legitimation structure. Example, elected officers in position of authority in relevant groups and an informal legitimation structure. For example, informal leaders in position of influence that may be even more important than the formal legitimizers. Both kind of legitimation are equally important, but may differ in the way the task of legitimation is approached and carried out. Legitimation at this stage of planning process consists of consultation with the formal and informal leaders of the previously specified relevant groups, organizations and individuals. Step 7 Diffusion Sets At this step, there is a need for people who can provide the kind of resources needed to inform the community or large area systems about the proposed project and give community residents an opportunity to express their opinions. The people who perform these functions are called diffusion sets. These resources include time, communication skills, organizational skills, access to many people or groups, etc. This step is launched, however, only after the successful completion of the preceding steps. Step 8 Definition of need by more general relevant groups and organizations. At this stage, the activities of the diffusion set usually attempt to broadly involve relevant individuals, groups and publics. The purpose of course is to convince the relevant social system of the need for proposed project. 
The process can be as simple as providing a social situation in which individuals felt needs are channeled into a general consensus. However, in most cases the step involved detailed and lengthy activities before the degree and amount of felt need is developed which will lead to action. In essence, this step is an outgrowth and continuation of the activities of diffusion sets. Some of the techniques and methods in obtaining a felt need regarding a problem are basic education, surveys or questionnaires, comparison and competition, exploring precise situation, challenging compliance or gripes and demonstration or trial. Step 9 decisions to action by relevant systems. This step is included to emphasize the importance of getting not only tacit agreement that the problem exists and needs to be solved, but also to commit people to act in relation to the problem. Since it is necessary to have the active cooperation and participation of relatively large number of people to carry out most community action programs. It is very important to obtain overt commitments to assist at this stage. These commitments to assist in various ways are important to the planners and to initiators of the project at this stage. They determine what resources and assistance can be counted on, whether these will be sufficient to carry out the project at the level plan. Lack of sufficient commitment to action at this point to carry out the project as planned may indicate that the problem and its proposed solutions have been sufficiently well defined. This would of course mean that additional efforts have been extended on the definition of needs step of the process. Step 10 formulation of objectives and goals. It may seem rather curious to think that the project has developed to this step without objectives, it has not. Many short run and intermediate goals have been developed and met up to this point. It is at this step after a problem has been defined and a need to solve the problem recognized that the goal or objectives should be formalized and stated explicitly. In more complex action programs, there may be more than one objective. Some of these may be immediate or short run, while others may be more general or long run. It is often of value to state the objectives of an action program in such a sequence so that the more general objectives is not lost sight of in the details of carrying out the immediate project. Step 11 decision on means to be used. Once objectives are set that is agreed upon and formalized there is a need to explore alternative means and their consequences that might be used to reach these objectives. At this stage it is very important that a consensus of opinion being reached among the relevant social systems concerning the means to be used to attain the defined objective. To have sound information and fact concerning various alternative methods. This will require anticipation of the kind of information and facts which may be needed. Who actually makes the final decision concerning means will vary from situation to situation. It may be a committee selected for this purpose. It may be the planner or initiator of the action project or any one of the several combinations of individuals or social systems. The important consideration is that as an end result there is an agreement among the relevant systems concerning the means to be employed. Step 12 plan of work decision or organizational structure 
designation of responsibilities, training, timing, planning of specific activities etcetera are all important part of this step. A formally stated plan of work usually indicate the following elements. Number 1 objectives to be accomplished. These usually correspond to the group's social term, immediate and long term objectives stated in a logically related fashion. Means to be used such a statement usually indicate a statement of the general means to be used in addition or more detailed description of specific methods and action to be taken. The organizational structure, authority pattern and the person and group responsible for actions to be taken. Training required to enable those responsible to accomplish the actions to which they are assigned. Additional specification of time sequence, an important part of the plan of work is the statement of the organizational structure. Such a statement should include role descriptions, the lines of authority and the authority and responsibility of each person or group. In essence, the plan of work summarizes the objectives, means and commitment to action and places them in proper time sequence for carrying out the action process. Step 13 mobilizing resources. This step refers especially to the mobilization and organization of the resources for carrying out the plan of work. The plan of work usually calls for the mobilization of many different kind of resources. These are human, physical facilities, financial, communication etc. If the preceding 12 steps have been adequately performed the mobilization of resources needed to accomplish the objective should be relatively easy. The project to this point has been carefully planned and legitimized. Relevant system have been convinced of the need for the project and committed to act in relation to it. This step then should be the payoff of all the work and planning that has gone into the project up to this point. Step 14 launching the program. It is at this point that the plan of work and available resources are put to work and carry out the actual project mentioned above. The ease with which this stage is accomplished will depend in large part on how effectively the preceding steps have been carried out. It is important to bear in mind that coordination and leadership are required to ensure smooth implementation of the project. Step 15 Evaluation One of the most important step of the process of social action actually comes after the completion of the project. Since this will probably not be the last action project carried out in the community or area. It is beneficial to build on past experiences and gain new insights concerning future action programs. The edge that experience can be an excellent teacher is perhaps a sound logic for final evaluation. It is at this stage of the process that answers needed to be sought for the questions. If our project was successful, why was it successful? If it failed, why did it fail? Summary It can be summarized that the social action is effective method to involve people to analyze, understand and solve their own problems with or without external assistance. Most community action projects are probably accomplished following a procedure which does not necessarily point out any new concepts but does highlight those steps which are most essential in successful social action project. The step and their order 
are suggested guidelines and not a rigid formula to be followed. However, the process presented has been tested and researched in most cases it probably best be applied in the order presented. In utilizing the process of social action at least three ideas are centered to its effective application. Throughout the process attention needs to be devoted to complete and accurate communication, periodic evaluation of progress at each stage and careful planning of steps.